Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, intake models today. Uh, all they really want is you. How many of you are doing traditional triage? I'm talking about the nurse up front, doing the vital signs, doing the initial assessment, traditional, traditional triage. Anybody got some things that even you will admit seem ridiculous, like are you doing spouse abuse screening, HIV testing screening? What the heck? How do we get doing those up at the front of an ER visit? I mean, uh, intake and traditional triage has morphed into something that we, we never intended it to be. So we're going to sort of challenge that and show you some new ideas for intake. Little background, the case for why you should improve this. You know, when I go in to help an ER that's having trouble as a consultant, I focus on door to dock because it's low hanging fruit. It is so easy to make some improvements there, and there's a lot of bang for the buck. And so I've done this uh, many times over and over. And uh, I'll tell you about a grant that EDBA had last year from AHRQ to look at different intake models. It was the best time I've had in my life professionally. So, perfect storm is brewing. This is real data, though it looks fake. This is showing you that the acuity of healthcare needs and the intensity of those healthcare needs increases as you get older. It's kind of a duh, but there you have it. It's a, an article from Spirivalish that just shows you. So this means as the baby boomers hit, we're gonna be seeing patients that are older, sicker, on 20 medications with lots of comorbidities. It's gonna be a challenge managing them. Oh, and by the way, in case you slept through this now, more patients that are in the hospital in this country this very second pass through the ER than getting there any other way. So we really are the front door. So instead of admitting people, right? So I feel like you go home and have another look at your OBS uh, unit. Should that be built out a little bit? Should you expand observation services? Uh, you know, and be in the game, because I think that's a big solution. A lot of times, what you're gonna need is more time sending somebody home, right? Or how about this? What if you could have a patient who's in the ER that you kind of want to admit because it doesn't feel like that follow-up thing is completely in place? What if you could send them to your urgent care, your low acuity center, or your ER first thing in the morning during the quiet hours for that follow-up again? You know, why not? Okay. Any, anybody else got some thoughts? How, how could we play this game? See, I think we are uniquely positioned to, to get in this and be part of this, be part of the solutions. What about anybody got a call center at their hospital? Do you do like ask a nurse or something like that? And, and you know these are woefully underutilized, right? Especially there are very many places where they have someone sitting there 24 hours a day and they get very few calls. So how about this? What if the call center could call out, not just take calls in. What if the call center got a list of people that were discharged today and called them tomorrow to see how they're doing? Jesus. So I was aghast when I went to an ER and the communication system that they had was when a call came to a doctor, the, the, the desk yelled out, pick 5643. I'm like, well, you only got two things left to put in your head. Pick 5643. Can you remember the patient's name and age, but then you're not going to remember what you wanted to say on, anyway in the call? And, and yet our systems where we work are fraught with this type of design. That's a really bad design, right? And you know what the solution was? It was so easy, it was dumb. They just came in and programmed those lines. So now it was Dr. Welch, call one, two. Dr. Welch, call on line three. You know, just a simple thing to remember to go, not pick, so there's a task, and four numbers, and then you get on with it. So there's an interesting study that looked at, and I think thought this was fabulous and very relevant. So the EMTs give report to the staff in an ER, and then they saw how much could people remember five minutes later, and there's your data, about 50% of what was told to them. So the idea of communicating in the head may not be such a good one if we, if we just can't keep it there, especially with the amount of information we're processing. Five minutes, you remember about half of it. 